So we've been using this spin coffee maker for about three months now. And I figured it was time for an update video. I wanted to cover a few things. One, obviously share my thoughts for, you know, what do we think about it after using it for a little over three months now? Uh, answer a few questions that have come up in comments on previous videos. I finally broke down and I tried the spin market. So I thought I'd share my thoughts on the market as well as maybe try a couple of the coffees from the market, talk a little bit about maintenance of the machine. And then finally, this is the pro model. So it's designed to be connected to my plumbing. So I thought I would finally get around to, after three months, plumbing in the coffee maker so we don't have to constantly refill it manually. So I don't see any point in mixing words. After three months of using this thing, we flat out love it. We've got three adults in the house. Bottom line is we're going through a lot more coffee than we did before, but it delivers what we'd hoped for, and that is Keurig convenience. I want a cup of coffee, push a button, I get a cup of coffee without the Keurig waste. You put in whole beans, they're ground fresh, and obviously the taste of the coffee matters. The coffee is delicious. There's been some concerns over it being app driven. You've got the Spin app and gee, I don't wanna to have to pull up my phone and use the app every time I wanna make a coffee. You don't have to. There's three standard buttons for espresso, longo, Americano, and then there are four programmable buttons. Now you do have to use the app to program the buttons, but that's easily done. And we use those. You know, my son likes a huge cup of coffee. So he puts his giant mug in there, uses custom option number one, and it does a double shot, large volume coffee. Before I go to the gym, I like a double shot of espresso that goes in my, and I just accidentally started the brew of my son's giant cup of coffee, which actually points out one of the things that I wish Spin would implement, and that's a cancel button. Oops, I did the wrong thing, I know it immediately, I want to cancel that brew because this is going to run a double shot, create a giant cup of coffee that I don't really want at the moment. That's one minor downside. While that brews, I can talk about another comment that came up and one is, gee, it seems loud. Well, it's grinding fresh beans. It is a coffee grinder. I've never seen a coffee, quiet coffee grinder anywhere. So yeah, it's a little loud. We watch TV in the same room and sometimes you find somebody pausing the TV while somebody makes a cup of coffee. The centrifugal brew, you hear it spinning now, the extraction. You also hear my cat being very noisy and obnoxious. Um, you know, that makes some noise too. It's not as loud as the grinder. I honestly can't say that I find noise a big concern with the machine. So while it's brewing that double shot of coffee, I'll show you a little bit of what the app looks like while it's brewing. Again, you don't really need to be looking at the app while it's brewing. The nice thing is, is if you do pick up the app, it does tell you what's going on. You know, it's grinding the second shot of two right now. Sometimes you get lucky. My son just showed up for the giant cup of coffee that I didn't <laughs> want. <laughs> Brewing brings to mind the next topic, which is the notifications on the machine. We actually find these very handy. It tells you what you need at any time. There's a little indicator light that shows up that says it needs beans. It needs the bin emptied. You know, this when I pull the bin out, that little light come on, comes on or it needs the drip tray emptied. I've heard some people complain that they find that this a lot of maintenance. That has not been my experience. The lights tell you what needs to happen. It's quick and easy. You empty the grinds, empty the drip tray, add water or add beans. And actually the add beans is topical because now I wanna to get to talking about the marketplace. Okay, so I did break down and order a couple of different blends from the marketplace. The marketplace is designed to be local. So I'm in Michigan. So I ordered from a couple of roasting houses in Michigan. I ordered from the Superior Coffee Company, the Mariners Two True North blend, and from the Viking Coffee Company, a Costa Rican blend. I have to say, I was impressed with the personal touch from the Viking coffee. I actually got with my order a handwritten note, which I would say exceeds my expectations for an internet order. But honestly, I do not expect to be using this marketplace very often. And the primary reason is shipping cost. It costs five bucks to ship your pound of coffee order. And the, this is a small batch, a handcrafted type stuff. So you pay accordingly. You're looking at about 15 to 20 bucks a pound for your coffee. Probably gone up since then. I haven't ordered, I ordered these a while ago. The other thing I'm not a huge fan about this market stuff is 
The app all but spams you. It complains that I have an unknown coffee in my coffee maker right now, and it wants me to put a known coffee in my coffee maker. Uh, so they're kind of pushing the marketplace coffees a little bit there. The nice thing though, is I did order on, you know, they talk about you're supposed to scan your coffee into the app. You don't even need to do that. When you order from the marketplace, you simply select. I have ordered this. Uh, oh, I, this is actually interesting for my next topic. I'm gonna select this um, Viking Costa Rican coffee, but it's actually telling me, the app is telling me that a cleaning is needed. So let's cover the process of the cleaning. This is something I've done a couple of times so far. I did order the spin specific cleaning supplies from their marketplace. Uh, again, shipping cost dings you a little bit here. Uh, so, you know, it's not a super cheap solution, but anyway, let's walk you through the, the process. It says here that the app is telling me that the cleaning is needed and I can simply say, do it now. It tells me, what do I need to do? Uh, I should, a third of a bottle of cleaning agent needed about 45 minutes. And so it's a good thing my son already got his coffee. And you say, start cleaning. I had recorded the entire process of running the cleaning, but honestly, you don't need to watch a video for that. The app tells you step-by-step step exactly what to do. So you just follow the prompts in the app. All told, it took maybe 10 minutes. Okay, so while I was messing around filling in water, I also put the new uh, Viking Coffee Company Costa Rican beans in the machine, and I will make myself the Longo, which I like when I'm just looking for a quick cup of coffee, which is this little small cup. Start. Now, one thing I find a little bit questionable here is I told the app that I'm now using these beans, and it supposedly it's adjusted the recipe accordingly. But there were still some of the other beans in the machine, so... The reality is, is it's now using the Viking coffee bean recipe with the Costco beans that were still left over in the bottom of the machine. I would have had to, if I wanted to be exact, actually pull out all the remaining Costco beans before changing the recipe. I can't see myself doing that. So what I have here is probably Costco coffee with the Viking coffee company recipe. Probably still tastes good. While that's brewing, I'll talk about one other thing we've observed by using the machine for a while. If you use an oily bean, like a French roast, uh, the feed down into the grinder mechanism isn't great. And we've found that you kind of have to poke a little bit with your fingers to get the coffee to feed down in with the grinder. Now this is not an oily bean that I'm using right now, so it'll probably feed fine. But with larger and oilier beans, each time we brew a coffee, we pop the lid, poke a little bit with our finger, put the lid back on, not the end of the world, and honestly, it's something we used to do with our old grind and brew machine as well. It had the same issue. So there you have it. There's my coffee with a nice crema on top. Okay. So while I drink my delicious cup of coffee, I cannot believe that I forgot one of the big topics of this video, and that is the Pro model comes with a milk frother and a carafe. And as is sometimes the case with spin, it took a while to get here, but it is here. And so we have an unboxing of what I hope is a milk frother in a craft. Right now we have an unboxing of more boxes. So, what's in box number one? Oh, for the love of another box. This one's actually a spin box. An unboxing, unboxing, unboxing video. Spin milk frother. And as is usually the case with spin, it's nice packaging, nice instructions, which I might even read since I don't have no idea how to use a milk frother. Ooh, fancy little stand and cord. The milk frother is an electrical device. I guess that makes sense. I and a, even a protective condom on the electrical cord. Fancy fabric-like bag containing said milk frother. And it looks like it can be removed. 
sticker sticks to me. There's a little heating element in there and a spinny thing sits on there. Definitely gonna have to read the instructions. Look kind of cool actually. Looks like the spin, got the similar spin button. Sweet. Confession, I've had this for about a month now. My wife, to her credit, has reminded me only once that she would like to retry her new milk frother. So she's out shopping at Costco right now while I film this video. So she will be happy with me when she comes home. Finally. Another box with another box in the box. Good Lord. I'm guessing this is the carafe. Ooh, fancy wooden base. And this sort of addresses one of the issues with the machine that's honestly, if you have a whole bunch of people around waiting to brew a coffee, one cup at a time is a little slow. So now we will have the ability to brew a carafe. It's a double layer glass carafe. So some insulating qualities, very nice actually. All right, after carefully reading every word of the instruction manual, they tell me the first thing I'm supposed to do is rinse out with warm water while carefully not stepping on my 11 week old lab puppy who insists on sleeping at the base of the sink. Okay, so I'm supposed to plug the device in, check that the spin button turns white. It does. Put an amount of milk appropriate for the recipe I want to use. Looks like there's three basic things it does. Hot frothing milk, warm froth milk, or cold frothing. And there are different instructions for how much milk you should put in. Minimum, maximum, minimum two ounces for all recipes. Maximum eight ounces for warm milk. Maximum 3.9 ounces. Exactly 3.9 ounces I will put in this. Actually, there is a little line on the thing that suggests minimum and maximum. I've gotten very close to the max line there, actually. And which recipe you use depends on how many times you push the button. Push the button once for hot frothing, twice for warm milk, and three times if you want cold frothing. Well, let's see how hot hot is. I pushed it once. And away it goes. Wait 80 to 140 seconds for the milk frother to finish frothing. You'll be notified by a sound and the spin button flashing. So the spin button is spinning, and obviously I'm going to need coffee. So, so far in this video, I've made one giant cup of coffee for my son, and I'm on my second cup of coffee. We'll see how long this lasts and just how wired I get before I'm done. And this is why they have recommended maximum sizes. I obviously put too much in for the hot frothing operation and it is leaking all over the place. Live and learn. That said, I do have some nicely frothed milk. Oh, that looks good. A bit of a stir. Oh, holy f that's good. We'll have to edit a little bit there. <laughs> All right, so let's try a carafe of coffee. The carafe does fit there normally on the same level. The little indicator light indicates that the drip tray is out, but that's not a problem in this situation. And let me get the app and figure out how I have to do a carafe. Now I'm sure I can program one of these custom buttons to be the carafe option. Carafe of coffee, make drink. As I said, I will, oh, it looks like that's actually custom button number four is the make a carafe. And that's probably enough coffee through this thing that will be now, actually we will be getting into the Viking coffee that I ordered. One of the things you learn, you get an ear for, remember I talked about sometimes you have to push beans into the grinder. You can actually tell by the sound the grinder makes whether it's getting beans or not.
and now it's going to start making the carafe. I imagine it'll probably have to couple, run a couple of grind and brew cycles. Yeah, it does. It says shot one of two. So it's going to run two cycles, just like it does with my son's very large cup of coffee. And then we will have a carafe of coffee. Now I will say that these uh, two cycle larger brews, they take a while. It's probably three or four minutes to brew the full cycle. So while it's doing that, I will point out that uh, milk frother is super easy to clean. It just lifts right off its little base. You don't have to unplug anything. Rinse out the frother, rinse out the lid, and you're, and you're good to go for the next batch. Meanwhile, back at the carafe, we are extracting a shot, or grinding rather, shot two of two. Okay, we finally have our carafe of coffee. Let's come back to... Milk frother. We will froth a little bit of milk this time, being, paying more attention to the fill lines in here. And away it goes. The frother is very quiet anyway. All right, the frother has beeped. So we take some of our coffee from the carafe, some of our hot froth milk, and I don't do it, but I know my son takes sugar. So let's put a little bit of sugar in there. All right, you may now try your now, coffee. Now I can have it. You're giving Try it Mm. Oh my god. Mm. Our life is not so bad. Mm. Oh my god. That's delicious. It's been a couple weeks between when I shot this video and when I finally got it edited. So while I show you the process of making a cappuccino, I'll share some final thoughts. So the most obvious question is, this is an expensive machine. Is it worth the price? The base model is currently 800 in round numbers and the pro model is 1300. So full disclosure, I made this purchase early in the Kickstarter funding. I paid a little less than half the current retail price. If I had to buy it today, would I pay full price? With the caveat that I understand that this is a luxury item and that price is certainly a splurge, my answer is absolutely. I'd buy it again. It delivers what we'd hoped for. High-end coffee shop flavor, curried convenience without the waste. So the next question is, would I pony up the extra 500 for the Pro model? Again, my answer is absolutely. We love the milk frother and think the direct plumbing option will be worth it in the long run. Even though, confession, I still haven't gotten that done yet. I guess that's the next video. So my final thoughts, in simple words, man, we love this coffee maker. Thanks for watching. Mmm, delicious.